Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gogni, the Rock Raptor at the Whistle Blowers team. Today I want to discuss a very important issue because uh, from the look of things, it is known, it is in the history that Right Honorable Raila Odinga, former Kenyan Prime Minister, has been known to be a social democrat who has fought for democracy not only in Kenya but in Africa at large. He has been a huge critic of dictators in the continent, not only in East Africa but Africa as a whole. Now, today, Right Honorable Raila Odinga is vying for the position of uh, African Union Chair. Raila is vying for this position not because he would love to hold this position of responsibility but because Raila as a politician has been and has a dream that of having Africa that is democratized the whole Africa democratized but then it is unfortunate that Raila finds himself um, between a rock and a hard place. Why do I say so? Raila, right from East Africa, starting from Kenya, as a fighter of democracy, he has been a huge critic of those that make life difficult to the honest, so to speak. I may mention the likes of right of Honorable Museveni, the president of Uganda. This is a dictator known to be very ruthless and does not entertain um, democracy, democratic kind of leadership. It is in Uganda that abductions and cold murder takes place under the watch and the leadership of President Museveni. Why is this taking place? The President reasons that since he did come to power through um, by overthrowing the then President, whoever wants to remove him or uproot him from the office must come to the office by the very means that he did emerge as the leader of Uganda. Therefore, as somebody, President Seven, who knows that Right Honorable Raila Odinga is a fighter for democracy in Africa, do you think he is genuinely supporting Honorable Raila Odinga to be the chair of African Union? The answer is obvious. Therefore, his endorsement to Right Honorable Raila is vague. Now, going to Tanzania, the Tanzanian president, uh, Her Excellency President Samia Suluhu, did come to the top uh, seat when the president, uh, John Pombe Magufuli, did pass, unfortunately, untimely, uh, it is alleged that he died of COVID, but well, only God knows how and what killed him. When she became president after the death of President Magufuli, life uh, resumed well and there was some sort of bit of normalcy in terms of um, quiet and calm leadership. And uh, there were great expectations from Tanzanians, from the lady, more so the opposition, who were not allowed to 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 uh, demonstrate, um, hold any peaceful picketing in Tanzania, and do all sorts of uh, activities that opposition would like to do in any democratic government. However, Her Excellency Suluhu. Samia Suluhu has emerged to be following the footsteps of the late president where abductions and deaths were characterized. 
As a result, we are seeing the similarities of the late John Pombe Magufuli in the presidency of Her Excellency Samia Suluhu. As a result, the union that she belongs that the EAC is a vague union because they have failed to fulfill the mandate of the formation of the EAC. She has not openly declared her support to the Right Honorable Raila Odinga. Therefore, the endorsement remains vague from that perspective as well. If we proceed down to Rwanda, in the homeland of Rwandese strongman, President Paul Kagame, he is just like, just like President um, Seveni, a renowned dictator whom is characterized by forceful disappearances, abductions, judicial executions, and uh, arbitrary arrests of opponents. He is a leader that is viewed as a dictator by many uh, countrymen, most of whom stay out of Rwanda because you cannot go against President Paul Kagame in Rwanda. As a result, we declare and believe that he is a dictator and someone who knows that Right Honorable Raila has been a fighter for democracy in Africa cannot be the best candidate for African Union. Therefore, his open declaration and clear and, and support for Raila Odinga's candidacy is as well declared vague. As we continue uh, uh, within the region of East Africa, it takes us to Ethiopia. Ethiopia, where His Excellency President uh, Abiy Ahmed of Ethiopia. This is a president whom is characterized with ethnicity, broad ethnicity that is known that the Oromo eth ethnic community uh, of Ethiopia is the dominant tribe that is holding the prime positions of Ethiopian government. And this, as a result, has led to lots of inequalities that has en uh, ensured that uh, there is endless fightings and civil wars among the ethnic communities of Ethiopia and the government. On that note, I do believe that uh, the president for Ethiopia the Prime Minister, Ethiopian Prime Minister, is not in a position to rightfully endorse Right Honorable Raila Odinga as the next AUC Chair. Therefore, the endorsement of Right Honorable Raila Odinga still, again, is viewed on that note as vague. Now, our campaign I mean, our next move is in Southern Sudan. Southern Sudan is a member of the EAC economic bloc. Now, Salva Kiir, President Salva Kiir, is one dictator in South Sudan, whom is very tribal, despite the fact that he is sickling, even though no one wishes anyone to be sick. But he is a dictator that has decided not to embrace democracy simply because he feels that his ethnic Dinka should remain in power because of the founding father of that nation, Dr. John Garang de Mabior, did emerge from their ethnic community the Dinka, which has always brought political strifes and turmoils in South Sudan between the Dinkas and the Nuer, where the Nuer, where the vice president then, uh, Dr. Riek Machar, comes from. Now, as a result of 
the strength and the push from Dr. Riek Machar to want to be the president of South Sudan. What did the president do? Doc president Salva Kiir introduced positions of other vice presidents from other regions with intentions to dilute the position of the vice president. Just like it did happen in Kenya sometimes, some years back, which was done to dilute the strength of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga when he was perceived as the uh, strong opponent against the president then, late President uh, Kenyatta. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to look at this. Look at it this way. Do you think a dictator who, as we speak today, has postponed the general elections to 2026 December in South Sudan simply because he doesn't want somebody to take the position of presidency who, who is likely to be from a different ethnic community. He has pushed elections to 2026. Now, can this kind of a leader endorse, genuinely endorse, Right Honorable Raila Odinga for this position of AU? The answer is obvious. He cannot. It cannot and it is not genuine. And these are some of the reasons why the Right Honorable Raila Odinga is not going to win the position of the AU chair, which is anticipated soon. As we move forward, I want to get to uh, our president of the Republic of Kenya, President William Ruto, who did come to power under the mandate of doubtful, uh, 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 doubtful collection of uh, opinion from different Kenyans who did vote, majority believe that they were voting and they voted Right Honorable Raila Odinga as the president of the Republic of Kenya. But unfortunately, things turned round during the telling day and the IEBC chair of the election electoral commission declared president william ruto as the president of the republic of kenya which was indeed contested in court but unfortunately because the executive uh, seemed then to have swallowed uh, the judiciary and that uh, and and legislature the chair of the ibc as well as the Chief Justice, both declared President Ruto the winner of elections, general elections of the Republic of Kenya 2022. As a result, there were demonstrations against those declarations and President Ruto's uh, presidency. There were many doubts if at all he will make it. And this has been proven by uh, latest demonstrations we started sometimes in May by the Gen Z uh, demonstrations and protests in Kenya, which were very peaceful, but then were faced by excess force from the police and were characterized by deaths and uh, abductions and, uh, uh, and uh, forced disappearances as well as arbitrary arrests of uh, opponents and members of uh, uh, the Gen Z um, movement which was uh, viewed and uh, indeed described themselves as uh, partyless, tribeless and leaderless. As a result, Right Honorable Raila Odinga did meet President William Ruto 
and they forged an alliance which led to the dismissal of some cabinet members and appointment and reappointment of new faces and old faces in the new cabinet. President William Ruto, even though he had once worked with the Right Honorable Raila Odinga, they say that politics is a dirty game. But then, President William Ruto was and is believed still to be a great political enemy of Right Honorable Raila Odinga. Therefore, his endorsement for Raila Odinga to go for the AU chair is very conditional. It is not something that is coming right from his heart, but it is conditional in the sense that he would like the old man to stay away from him based on his political influence in Kenya. Because majority of the youth of Kenya and most Kenyans across the uh, ethnic divide love and believe in Right Honorable Raila Odinga before he joined President William Ruto. Therefore, the endorsement as well we view as vague. Now, the EAC block and other blocks in the African continent is a testament to the fact that the African Union is just but a club of dictators where institutionalization of autocracy is tabled and discussed and implemented. And that is why the African Union Chair cannot land in the hands of Right Honorable Raila Odinga because they know him and they know what he means and they know what he's going, to f go going there to fight for. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, when Raila Odinga, we wish him well as Africans. We wish him all the best as Africans to go and try his best and see if at all he can be elected as the next chair of the AU. If he happens to fail to cling to that office, which I think is obvious based on the statistics and analyses that are happening not only in Kenya but across Africa, Right Honorable Raila Odinga will come back home and as a politician that we know, he will embark on active politics. But we don't know how he's going to do that because he has stepped down from active politics and even left the position of chairperson of his political party, Orange Democratic Party. We are waiting to see what is going to happen. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to leave it at this juncture. As we wait for more, I'm going, I want to promise you that many more are yet to come. This is just but a start. Thank you very much for listening. And if anybody has any um, burning issue or you would like to comment, please feel free to comment in the comment section. I'll, I'll be glad to read from you. All the opinion are welcome. Thank you very much.